Hey, it's Ken Gagney with YouTube channel GameBits with this week's Indiesider show focusing on the Steam game Cubot. This game came out for Android in January 2014, for iOS in August 2014, and finally for Steam in January 2015. This is a sliding puzzle game of sorts, matching color. I'm going to skip back from level 4 and 1, which is how far I've made it so far, to an earlier level. Let's see. Now, what first brought me to this game was actually not the gameplay itself so much as the music. If you can hear it over my incessant chatter, the soundtrack is actually quite placid. I was surprised by this because a lot of games like Intelligent Cube or Dual Tris, despite being puzzle games, have very frenetic soundtracks. They want you to make the right move right away. And this game is a little bit calmer than that. So the point of the game is to move the cubes onto the tiles with the matching color. I'm playing on my laptop, so I can use the arrow keys to rotate left and right, or to get a bird's eye view, or scroll down. And then I use the WASD keys to move. Now in this level, one thing to note is that, well, in every level, all the cubes move together. So if I push S right now, they all move together, and it's keeping track up here how many moves I've made. Now, what I like is that the developer was thoughtful enough to make the controls depending on your point of view. So right now, if I push W, I go up, but if I rotate, rotate in this direction, pushing W also makes me go up. So let me restart the level so I can try to get a good score. Now, the pieces will come out of synchronization if they can't move any farther. So if you push up and one cube can move up and the other one can't, then they will fall out of sync a little bit. So watch, I'm gonna go left, up, up, right, right, down, down. And that was it. Seven moves is what they recommend as the minimum to finish this level. You can do it in more than that, but you won't get a perfect score that's important to you, then you can always try again. It does support some mouse controls, but I often find myself not making the pieces go where I want when I use the mouse, so I tend to just use the keyboard. So this world, level 1-whatever, is pretty easy, pretty calming. There's only one real mechanic, and that is the blue tiles the, and the blue cubes. Now let's see, once you fall down, you can't go back up. So what I need to do here, I think, is make a, because that's not how physics works. But in this game, why not? Uh, let's see, nope. I think there's a take back button. I would have been able to do that in 15 moves but I'm not quite sure what the undo button is on the Mac version of this game. So here's where you start getting some new mechanics, and that is the red tile. So just like in chess, how different pieces have different movement patterns, the red cube moves two at a time. And the only way it will move fewer is that if there's only one spot to go. So here, just one. That was easy. This is level two one, the first introduction to the red cube. There will also be green cubes and other kinds of cubes. So let's take a crack at this one. Hmm. Now what? Well, that works. That was eight. I should have been able to do it in four, and I have done it in four. That's my best score on that level. Now, again, just like earlier, I need to make a bridge. There we go. Hmm. Whoops. There. I should have made the bottom cube go right instead of left. Create a bridge. This one, I remember being rather tricky. I've done all these levels before, but I'm not doing my best while the camera's watching, 
because that's a little bit more pressure than I'm used to. There, I got one of them in. So I just have to do the same thing with that one. There. 11 moves should have taken me 9. And my best score is 10. So I've never gotten a perfect score on that level. Now, let me actually show you a level that I found really challenging. And level solution, every time you finish a level, you earn points, and you can then spend those, those points to have the game show you how to beat it. But what's also cool is that you don't necessarily have to do the levels in order. So, for example, here's a level that I had a lot of trouble with. I like these inspirational quotes. It's like the game knows you're going to need them. This game, this level, I needed somebody to show me how to beat. And that somebody was, you know, the game itself. The red cube is the only one you need to finish that level. It doesn't matter where any of the blue cubes are. But let's skip ahead to... This is episode 2. Let's skip to episode 4. Why not? And I don't think I've done any of these yet, but I can go ahead and do any of them. Green Cube, Bond, not James, Just in Time, Green Power Rangers, whichever I like. The game does have a couple of options and settings. I can erase everything I've done so far. Uh, the credits. Cubot 1.5.1 is the version I'm playing for this video. A game by Nikopliv Games. Oh, and it even gives the name of all the music. Excellent. So, there we go. And other options include music volume, sound volume. Some people like to turn the sound all the way down and just play with this music in the background, which I kind of dig. Uh, full screen music controller. You can choose the Xbox 360 controller, which I have a previous YouTube video on how to hook up to your Mac. Keyboard mouse or PS3 controller. I've not tried it with my PS4 controller, which is how I've been playing a lot of Steam games lately. But now that you have the mechanics under your belt, Let's continue playing the game while I interview the developer. Now this interview is going to be a little bit unique or in that the person whose voice you'll be hearing is actually my friend Antoine Vignal of the software development company Brutal Deluxe. They had nothing to do with this game. He is serving merely as a translator. The words you will be hearing belong to the developer of this game whom I interviewed via email. He provided his answers in French and Antoine will be translating and reciting them for you. Today I'm speaking with Nicolas Pierlotti Vio through my friend Antoine Vignal. My first question is about the game's aesthetic. I was drawn to the game by the very soothing music in the trailer. Very often, even puzzle games can have very fast-paced, energetic, frenetic music. Why did you choose a more calming approach to this game? From the start, I wanted a calm and relaxing music for the game. This from the perspective to not disturb the player during his reflection. The trailer aiming to present the game, it therefore had to have the same music. That makes sense, it is a very soothing game to play and you'd want a presentation that matches that. How did you go about creating that presentation? Many indie games are developed by just a single person who is good at graphics, audio, mechanics and design. Is that the case with Cubot or did you have assistance? Given that Cubot is a small game, I have been almost able to do everything alone. However, since I have no musical knowledge, the music and a part of sound design are not from me. In fact, the music is a Creative Commons track found on the web by chance, and it was exactly what I wanted for the sound ambiance. So, it was perfect. Excellent. In fact, upon closer examination of the credits, I found the citation for the game and where it can be found online, and so I've been able to download it and listen to it without necessarily being forced to answer puzzles that I'm not smart enough to figure out. When I do finish the levels, I feel awfully clever, but at first blush, I very often feel anything but. I imagine that was probably the case when designing the game as well. Some of the early testers may have had challenges with it. How did you make sure that the puzzles weren't too hard? Did you have people testing the game to make sure it was actually beatable and reasonable? How did you make sure the levels weren't too hard? I don't know. There is no magic solution. As a first step, I created a lot of levels. I tried to rank them in order or difficulty. Thereafter, I proposed to my friend to test the game. This allowed me to see the strengths and weaknesses of the game. So, 
I made adjustments to try to have the best progression curve possible. The last tests I made were done at shows, where many players were able to test the game, which allowed me to have a lot of feedback. That seems to be a common theme with a lot of indie games. Opening them up to early access on Steam allows you to get feedback from players early on, and bringing it to shows allows you to get a lot of publicity and a lot of very hands-on feedback about your game. Other than player feedback, what would you say were your inspirations for this game? Were there other games that you wanted to improve upon? Although the concept for Cubot is relatively simple, I can't think of anything exactly like it that I've played before. The closest I can think of is Intelligent Cube for PS1, in that it's cubes rotating across a flat surface. Or maybe even the Nightmare Cooperative, which I previously played on IndieCider, in that all the pieces move together. What games were you thinking of when you made Cubot? It's funny, but I didn't know these games. I will find out about them. There are mainly three games that inspired me. Lozorx, a flash game where you have to move a parallelepiped to a near revival point. Devol Dice, a PS1 game where the player controls a small devol which must clear the game board by matching the numbers on the upper side on adjacent dice. And last, the Portal series mainly for uncluttered aesthetics. Portal, really? I never would have thought of that. Although there is a teleportation mechanic in the later levels of your games, maybe it should have occurred to me. Likewise, I haven't heard of your two games that you mentioned. Well, I've heard of Devil Dice, but it was so long ago on the PS1 that I never got to play it and I don't know that I can find it now. But the other game you mentioned, the Flash game, I'll find that and put a link to it in the show notes for anybody who's listening who wants to give it a try. So this particular game, Cubot, I'm playing on my Mac after its recent release on Steam, but it was previously released for iOS and before that for Android. What was the learning curve like for each platform compared to the others? Did you find one easier or harder to write for? Were there particular challenges in porting your game between the platforms? It's not more or less difficult to develop for a system rather than another. The hardest task is to succeed to reproduce the same game experience on each system or devices. I hope to have succeeded. In fact, to talk a bit more about the technical part, the different versions of the game share 80 to 85% of the same code. The differences are due to the possibilities offered by each system. For example, the addition of in-app purchase on the Android version to propose a demo of the game. Or the addition of achievements in the Steam version. What about gameplay-wise? What feedback did you get from each version of the game that you took into consideration when porting it to yet another platform? Or how did the versions of the game change from one platform to the other? The game did not really change each time it has been brought on a new system. With the possibilities offered by sales platforms like Play Store, iStore, or Steam, I was able to take into account the player feedback instantly. This allowed me to correct level design problems or bugs. Of course, these corrections have been passed on new portages. The first version released on Android is completely different than the first version released on Steam. Sure, because each time you port it you're not starting from scratch. That makes sense. Speaking of the Steam version, I was pleasantly surprised to pay less than $2 for the Mac version of this game. That is typical of what I would expect to pay for this game on mobile devices, but Steam games tend to run a little bit higher in prices. Why did you go with such a pleasantly affordable price for the desktop version? Yes, it's pretty cheap for a desktop game, but I have wanted a price close to that of the mobile version. Interestingly, about the mobile version, some people consider the game rather expensive while it's the same. Yeah, I've never been able to figure out the pricing structures and mechanics of the mobile market, and I'm just worried that we're in a race to the bottom, that we're going to end up crashing the industry like we did with E.T. back in 84. But that's a different discussion for another day. In the short-term future, though, far before the video game apocalypse, what plans do you have for future versions of Cubot? Will there be additional levels or DLC or maybe even a level editor? The main problem with addition of a level editor is that I hadn't planned to do from the beginning and it would take to change a lot of things at the game engine. And if I start to change the game engine, I would just like to modify the menus because there are some things that hinder me but also the graphic assets, adding new game design concepts, etc. In the end, the game will not be the same as the current one. I think that all these enhancements, modifications, additions will be added in a new game. But nothing is certain. 
Great. Well, whatever that future game may be, I look forward to playing it. In the meantime, thank you so much for QBot and for giving me your time, Nikolai. I appreciate it. And thank you to Antoine for serving as an intermediary.